there's a really easy way to have backup power using the Anchor Solex F3800. The F3800 is actually a unit you guys have requested that I review multiple times, and I finally got one. It is a really incredible unit, and the first thing that's different about it is it uses three sides in order to use different outputs and inputs, so that way it's in a very compact, very sleek looking package. Now this may become a problem for the system, but we're gonna find out in this video how well this runs my house. This has a 6,000 watt inverter built into this, along with a 3,840 watt hour battery. That is really impressive because this is something that could easily go underneath the desk, tucked into a corner. It's capable of laying flat. It's on wheels that turn. It's got a handle here. It's really easy to move around anywhere that I need to take it. And as you can see, it's still light enough that I can lift it up, but it's not light by any means. It is very heavy. The reason I say it's a really easy system to run your whole house with is because it has two 240 volt outlets already built in. This is an L1430 rated to 30 amps, and this is a NEMA 1450 rated to 50 amps, both of those at 240 volts. You're still gonna be limited to the 6,000 watt output of the inverter, but in order to run my house, all I have to do is take one of these two outlets, plug it into this inlet right here, flip a switch on my breaker, and I'm completely off grid. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that, and even charge this off of solar. That way if the grid goes completely down, I have all this backup power ready to go. I really love backup power in solar. That's what I really focus on. But in general, I like to be prepared. That's really my focus in all of this that I do. The two options that I have is to use this 7,200 watt rated L14 cable or this 12,000 watt rated NEMA 1450 cable. I'm gonna be using this just because I can, but keep in mind, you're still limited to the 6,000 watts here. I have an SS250P generator inlet right here, and that connects directly to my electrical panel. And then in my electrical panel, I have an interlock switch. It's very similar to a transfer switch, but it's meant to run the entire electrical panel rather than just a sub panel for critical loads. I always recommend that you get the SS250P inlet because it's rated to 12,000 watts. And that's because if you get two of these, you can link them together to get 12,000 watts of output which is what you're gonna need if you have a lot of electric heat appliances like an electric water heater, electric dryer, or large air conditioning, electric heat in the house, those kinds of things, you'll want to get two of these to have whole house backup. I mostly run on propane for all of my heat, so 6,000 watts tends to be more than enough than what I need. So before I turn anything on, all I want to do is connect this straight into the outlet here. Very easy. And then all I do is I take this metal piece and line it up with this metal piece that's on the side or take this groove that's in the top, line it in the 12 o'clock position, push it in, twist it, and I'm locked in. So if the grid power was out, obviously the lights wouldn't be on right now, but they're on because we still have grid power. But let's say I wanted to not pay an electricity bill or the grid goes out. All I have to do is flip this main breaker over, whole house goes out, flip up this metal plate, which is the interlock switch, and then turn on this breaker. Now I'm gonna turn on the AC output and that's gonna supply power to the whole house. Simply hold the on off switch. I like to keep my batteries charged at 100%. Some people keep it lower to increase life cycles, but because the batteries in this are gonna last for well over 10 years, I'm honestly not worried about the life cycles. Then turn on the AC output with this little button right here. We heard that click. Now everything is running in my house again. We can see that we're already pulling about 1200 watts. This means that my fridge in my kitchen is working without any problems. I don't have to pull it out and plug it in directly into the system. My freezer is also working, no problem at all. Gotta keep those corn dogs nice and cold. Can't let those go bad. But we store a lot of meat and food in here, so obviously we wanna keep this good to go. We also have a secondary fridge that we keep, lots of frozen items, and then any extra room that we need for refrigeration, all right here, working without a problem. It's only been a minute or so, and we can see that the initial energy draw has dropped down to almost 400 watts, now about 350 watts. So you will see a slight surge in your energy usage when you first turn the system on. The lights in my garage work great. My garage door works without any problems because I'm running the entire house. This makes it really easy. Light switches and light fixtures in my house work without any problem. One of the few hassles is that the clock on my microwave and oven do have to be reset as well as I need to turn off the oven light. For some reason, it automatically comes on. What if I wanna run the ceiling fans? Super simple, not a problem at all. What if I wanna run my furnace? Turn this on to heat. Let's go ahead and get this kicked on. 
I was close to between 350 and 500 watts of my average draw when we first got this going. And now we can see we've increased by about another 500 watts. That tells me that the blower on my furnace requires about 500 watts to run. I don't have central air conditioning in my house. We use these Mr. Cool mini splits. We have four of them in the house. They're all 240 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on to cool. Let's go all the way down to the lowest setting. I'm also gonna turn it on to turbo mode. And you can see this little laser that's coming from my digital thermometer here. So we are blowing out 56 degree air. That is very cold, but how much energy is it using? Mind you, the mini splits will use more energy when they first get started than when the room gets to temperature. Let's see here, about 1100 watts. So in total, it's only using about 600 watts to provide 56 degree air on turbo mode, which is gonna cool a large space very easily. One of the advantages of using the display in this way is I can actually test how much energy each item is using. So as an example, if I were to run a 600 watt load like that mini split air conditioner nonstop for one hour, then I will consume 600 watt hours off of the 3,800 watt hour battery. That means I can run that on the turbo mode for about six hours because 600 times six is 3,600 watt hours and this holds 3,800 watt hours. The same applies if I were running 1,000 watts constantly between everything in my house, which is more than what I typically use, I'd be able to run that for 3.8 hours because 1,000 goes into 3,800 3.8 times. So if you're trying to figure out how much battery capacity you need, then all you really need to do is get a kilowatt meter. You can find them usually at hardware stores or on Amazon. And all you do is plug in each appliance that you want to run see how much energy it uses over the course of one hour. That will tell you how many watt hours per hour it uses. And then let's say you need to run for 15 hours through a single night running those appliances. You simply add all of the energy used for each of those appliances, multiply it by 15 hours, and that tells you exactly how much power you need to get through a 15 hour night. Then you'll know if you need to get the expansion batteries or even another F3800 to have more battery capacity and more output, depending on what your needs are. One thing to notice is I've only been talking for a couple of minutes and this has already dropped down to 850 watts. I have not turned off that air conditioner. So that means I'm now saving an additional 200 watt hours per hour and that's gonna increase how much time I can run the system. And it's dropping even more as I speak. And that's because with the way that mini splits work is they kind of ramp up and go down depending on the demand. And that's one of the reasons why I highly recommend them. Those were not sponsored. I bought them all on my own. It's an awesome investment. For me, one of the most important things to have is running water. More than anything, I think running water is the biggest game changer. And then second to that is having hot water. So I want to see if my well pump works. This spigot right here spits out a lot of water. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah. It's actually digging up the dirt there. Not a problem to run my well pump. In one of my upcoming videos, I'm gonna have all of these solar panels plus six more on a permanent stand mounted here in the back of my property that'll be on a tilting mount so that I can adjust it for different times of the year. But for now, I need to see how I can connect these solar panels or any other ones that I have into the Anchor Solux F3800 so that I can keep it charged up during the day while running my house. So on the opposite side of the outlets, we have our inputs right here. This up top is a way to connect multiple F3800s together. And then this down here is where I can add the expansion batteries. I had a question on the solar input because it says 11 to 32 volts and 10 amps, and then 32 to 60 volts and 25 amps. I wanted to make sure I understood this properly, so I actually called Anchor Solix and their customer service was great. They answered my questions. If I understand correctly, and this would be my fault, not theirs, I'm pretty sure each of these can go up to 60 volts and 25 amps. Let's put that to the test. One thing I would advise Anchor Solix to change is they did not include an XT60 to MC4 adapter. So I bought these on Amazon just for this video so that we could see how it works but they do include this three to one branch connector. This allows me to plug in three positive or male connectors on this one and three negative connectors on this one so that I can increase my amps. Because when you add panels in this way, your amps go up and your volts stay the same. And these are a 10 gauge, which are capable of handling up to the 25 amps I need here. Here I have a 400 watt Canadian solar solar panel and we can see that the upper the optimum operating voltage is 30.8 volts, but that's the voltage after it starts working in the MPPT. 
the open circuit voltage is the one that we have to pay attention to, oftentimes called VOC, and it's 36.8 volts. So the problem with this is I can only connect one of these solar panels into one of those ports and stay below the 60 volt rating. I can at least put two of these in parallel to be right above the 25 amp input and get about 800 watts of rated input. Now the solar conditions are not perfect today. It is very bright and sunny, but there are a lot of clouds in the sky, so I'm not expecting to see full solar input. I have two 400 watt solar panels plugged into these solar cables, and I'm currently getting 36.2 volts. So I'm automatically going to be jumped up into this higher voltage, which then can handle higher amps. Let's see how much input we get. So we're only bringing in 300 watts, even though I have 800 watts connected. So remember, there's two different types of voltages that the panels get off. The VOC is the voltage before it starts working hard and then you have voltage after the solar input starts working. Now what we see is that we're at 32 volts instead of the higher voltages before. And then I'm gonna switch this over to amps. It's important to make sure that you zero it out before you start using that. Then I clamp this around either one of these cords and we can see how much amps are coming through. And we're only getting 10.5 amps. Remember each panel's rated to about 13 amps and there's two panels. So there's up to 26 amps connected in these two wires, but we're only getting 10. And that's because the voltage has dropped down low enough that it's at the lower amperage and voltage rating, whereas the VOC, the voltage before inputting, was higher than this, and we should be able to get up to 25 amps. So what I'm wondering is if there's a way we can hack this to where we add two panels in one group and two panels in another group, join those together, that should increase our voltage, but I think it'll exceed the 60 volt max and that would be dangerous. But the bottom line is with these 400 watt panels, I don't know how to get close to the 60 volts without going over it and then upwards of 25 amps. So that's the real question is how do we do that? And that I don't know. If any of you have had good success with how to max out the solar input on the F3800, please comment down below. That'll be something that all of us can benefit from. Looking on the specs here on the back, we can see all of the information about the system here. And here we can see that each solar input is rated to 1200 watts max. So ideally we can get 2400 watts of solar input. That would be really nice. With 2400 watts of solar input on both of these, we'd be looking at getting a charge of around 13 to 14 kilowatt hours in a day on a clear sunny day. So the battery that's in the main unit is only about a third of the total chargeable capacity in a single day. So I would really be interested in getting two more expansion batteries for this and really maxing it out because then I'll have enough battery to run my whole house through the night. And then in ideal conditions, I can recharge all of that in a single day as long as I'm just running my essentials. Not all solar generators work in this way to where you can have the 240 volt output as well as the 120 volt output on the rest of the outlets. I'm going to go ahead and put a high load on it. And this is plugged right into the normal 120 volt outlets and working perfectly fine. So if I wanted to use this in my RV, I would be getting two legs of 120 volts and they would happen to be in split phase, which is great for a house, not necessary for an RV but it allows me to run a 50 amp RV. Now my RV is only rated to 30 amps, but regardless, this is more than capable of running an entire RV, including the air conditioners. Now you do have the option to just plug in your vital appliances directly into this. You could keep this in the house and run extension cords everywhere. That's gonna be the most affordable option, but in terms of being the most convenient, then you wanna get this generator inlet and connect in with your 50 amp or 30 amp connector because now my light switches work, my sump pump works, well pump, everything that I want to run is already connected. If I want to make sure that I don't overuse the system, then I can go into my electrical panel and simply turn off the breakers that I don't want to be using off of this in order to make the battery last longer. Really the best thing for me to do is get more batteries. There are discounts available for this and I'll have all that info in the description down below if this is something that you'd like. Obviously I like it because I'm able to run my whole house. Having a single unit with 240 volt power is extremely cool. It's becoming more popular and it is very helpful in order to run a whole house. In terms of preparedness, it's hard to find a system like this that has all the same features and benefits. And that's one of the reasons why I like it is because it's such a complete package. Then in addition to already having 240 split phase, I can add another system, get really high output as well as more solar input and more battery expandability. So for all those 
those reasons I really like it. The only thing I really dislike is the solar input is a little tricky. I think it's just gonna take some work figuring out which panels are gonna be the best setup for that. I fully believe in being prepared. This is one that I would use for preparedness. Uh, there are a lot of other great reviews showing how reliable and good this is. Anchor Solux has had great customer service. If you wanna see how I've permanently been able to take my house off grid, then click this video right up here. And if you wanna see how you can connect your house to the grid while being 100% self-reliant and how I'm using that to make me money, then make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that. Be prepared, see y'all in the next video.